RX 9070 XT 16 GB, it's finally at MSRP. How does it stack up against the RTX 5070 Ti for Black Friday and early Black Friday sales? What's the best 1440p GPU deals that we expect that you should be looking out for? If you're looking to upgrade your system, should you only be focused on the GPU and when should you be upgrading your CPU as well? Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. All of this and more in our October 2025 Q&A. If you get value out of this video, please give it a like. It really does make a difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Let's jump into it. This video is sponsored by Meter, the company building better networks. Now, before YouTube, I ran operations at nonprofits. And like most businesses, our biggest headache was networking from inflexible pricing to complex and fragmented tools. I wish we'd had Meter. Meter builds out full stack networking solutions that actually work for business. They design the hardware, they write the firmware, and they build the software. They handle deployment and ongoing management so it all works together. Meter gives you full control with deep visibility, policy level control, and ongoing support. It's a single integrated solution that scales from branch offices, retail stores, warehouses, and large campuses to data centers. If you're ready to offload your networking headaches to a trusted partner, go to meter.com slash PC Builder to book a demo now or click the link in the video description. All right, we got tons of sales. Early Black Friday has already started after Prime Day. GPU and GPU prices are cheaper than they were for Prime Day already. It's totally crazy. But with all that going on, a lot of you want to know, should I be upgrading your current GPU or what about if you're building a new gaming PC, what? GPU should you be looking for? That's what Aiden Goodrich is asking. With the prices for the 9070 XT finally reaching MSRP, is it worth it to get the 9070 XT over the 5070 Ti for gaming, given there's about a $150 price difference? Well, first of all, I would also mention for the RTX 5070 Ti, you can also get a game bundle with it, which is Arc Raiders Deluxe Edition. I want to say it's a $50 value. So if you care about the game and you were going to buy it anyway, that's basically you're going to get get it for like $700 for the GPU. Meanwhile, let's go over to the AMD Radeon side. Yes, we in fact saw the PowerColor Reaper during Prime Day and after Prime Day come down to $599, finally MSRP. Now, yes, you could get these GPUs at MSRP on launch day, but within an hour or two, the MSRP models had completely sold out and they never came back until right now. And you had to pay upwards of eight, nine hundred dollars at times for a 9070 XT. Not to say the 5070 Ti suffered a better fate. It was like over a thousand bucks at the same time. But if you watch our GPU market update video, which I'll leave linked down in the video description for October, we every month go through the GPU market and I tell you which GPUs are the best ones to buy. You've seen the 9070 XT price and the 5070 Ti price go down and down and down. Now the 5070 Ti hit MSRP in August. The 9070 XT finally hit MSRP here in October. Although again, that model is currently sold out, but I suspect we're gonna see other models on sale for the, for the MSRP, potentially below that MSRP as well. So then which one should you be getting? Well, both of them have great upscalers. You got DLSS4 on the 5070 Ti, and with the 9070 XT, you have FSR4. The only difference really between the upscalers, even at 1440p, is game adoption. So NVIDIA has wider game adoption for DLSS4, but that's older games. If you're like, hey, Jason, I just want to play new stuff that's coming out, very likely that it's going to be roughly equal, although you can't, I can't say for certain that every game is going to support FSR4 or DLSS4, but we've seen most of the games support both of these technologies out there. Then in terms of ray tracing, AMD's largely cut up in regular ray tracing workloads. The one area that NVIDIA still has an advantage seems to be path tracing, like these heavy path tracing games. That being said, there's only a, like a handful of these heavy path tracing games even out there. So unless you're like super into one of those games and you have to do super high-end path tracing, in that case, you probably already know you want an NVIDIA GPU and you're probably gonna get like a 5080 or a 5090 to do those. I would say that, again, the playing field is roughly equal. It's hard to justify the 5070 Ti going for an extra $100. I do suspect we may see them start to bleed under MSRP because of that. And if you look at the best-selling GPUs recently, the 9070 XT has been one of the best sellers, along with the 9060 XT 16 gigabyte, right? Those are the two best-selling GPUs out there. The 5070 Ti is not, it's not like it's a bad seller, but it's just not top of the mind. It is typically, I think, in the top 10. Well, the 9070 XT, there's usually a couple models up there in the top 10. So which one would I buy? You both have 16 gigs of VRAM on both of them. 
Honestly, it's gonna be up to you, especially with some other component prices like SSD and RAM spiking up because yeah, thanks AI, they're gobbling up all the SSD and RAM out there. So the prices on those things are going up. If you're building a brand new gaming PC or you're looking to do other upgrades to your PC, you might find that things are a little bit more expensive and you need to stretch your dollars. And when you need to stretch your dollars, the 9070 XT to me looks like the clear winner in that category. And I also think we're at a moment right now where AMD, this is kind of their Ryzen 3000 moment. Remember Ryzen 3000 was the moment where people were like, oh, AMD is now a real choice out there. They're not better than Intel, but they're a real choice and, and people decided to go with them because they were fed up with Intel drip feeding us tiny little performance increases. And I think people are reaching that point with Nvidia right now where they're like, hey, I've had it up to here with them and I'm gonna go with somebody else if there's another alternative out there. And I, I see a lot of people kind of expressing that. That doesn't mean that you have to buy into that. Obviously you're gonna buy a GPU and play games with it. It doesn't have to be a consumer statement, right? You can just buy whatever you want. It's your money after all. So I would just decide based on that. Uh, to me, there's not a lot of difference between them. You can't go wrong either way. They're both great graphics cards. I like the 9070 XT just because it's cheaper. Okay, what about those of you looking to upgrade an older graphics card? What should you be looking at for values? That's what Gluttonous Goober wants to know. What 1440p GPU should they be looking at for upcoming sales? They have a 6800 XT. They want something that could run at higher frame rates at max settings. They've also got an older platform here. They've got an i9-10900K, which is still okay, but obviously I think we would wanna look at upgrading that if we have a higher end graphics card and they're willing to upgrade everything. Now, so let's just talk more generally. Uh, they have a 6800 XT. So one of the things you might wanna do is take a look at, for instance, Tech Power Up's RX 9060 XT 16 gigabyte reviews. Why those? Because they're the most recent ones and they've got all the other GPUs on them. This is the average at 1440p, I believe it's 23 games. They use a pretty wide spread that slightly favors Nvidia compared to other reviewers, but not to any real huge extent. So you can get a good idea of where your GPU might be. So if we scroll down here, for instance, if you have a 6800 XT, you can see it's right here. It's roughly as powerful as an RTX 4070 or an RX 7800 XT or RTX 3080. And that's the kind of the class of GPUs you're looking at. So you 3080 10 gigabyte owners, you're kind of in the same boat basically, except you have less VRAM. So you're probably even feeling the strain of wanting that upgrade even more out there. So then you can kind of figure, okay, that's what that's the amount of FPS at 1440p I have for free. For zero dollars, this is what I currently have out there. Obviously, you also have FSR 3.1. You don't have FSR 4, although possibly it might make its way to RDNA 2. We'll have to wait and see. So then what would be a, a substantial upgrade for you? So the 9070, we'd go from about 90 average FPS to 114 average FPS, so it's about 20, that's about a 25% FPS increase, but that's gonna cost you about $550. Now, you might think, geez, that sounds like such a lot of money for, yeah, because we're starting off with a relatively high-end GPU, but let's pretend for a second we had a 3060 Ti, eight gig or a 3070 eight gig. Let's come down here, let's 3060 Ti eight gig. Now we're at 61 average FPS. We're almost gonna double our FPS by going by spending that same $500. So it's really gonna depend on the GPU you, that you start with. That's how I would probably approach this problem for you because you didn't give me a budget to expand. So for those of you at home, here's how to think about it. Factor in your current GPU power. Number two, factor in your budget, and then factor in your current CPU power. And you can see our best CPU GPU combo 2025 video for more on this. In your case, you've got the 10900K, which is about as strong as a Ryzen 5600X. You gotta take your budget into account. So if you're like, Jason, I'm willing to build a brand new gaming PC if I have to, because that 10900K is getting a little long in the tooth, right? Although that system is probably giving you great FPS right now. You could probably sell it to somebody else. I would look at probably a 9070 XT, 125 average FPS, but again, it seems to be doing better now than it did on launch day through either driver updates or game optimizations or 5070 Ti. Those are the kinds of upgrades that I feel like would be more transformative for the amount of money you're spending. Now, of course, now we're spending 600 to $800. So you probably also want to consider upgrading your gaming CPU, but that's the kind of, FPS performance that I would want to see. I'd want to see in the 40 to 50% range, depending on how much money I'm spending. Obviously, if you'd like a GTX 1050, you're looking at buying a 9060 XC 16 gigabyte. That's a huge amount of FPS increase. If you have a GPU with less than 12 gigs of VRAM, I think you 
probably just want to jump on even potentially a side grade out there if you want to play games at 1440p high settings. And if you have a GPU that already has 16 gigs of VRAM, are you going to get a better upscaler? You will get FSR4, for instance, or DLSS4 if you go with a newer GPU, whereas right now you're stuck on FSR 3.1 and at 1440p, that really does make quite a bit of difference out there. So probably even a bigger FPS increase than we're looking at here if you're gonna use upscaling. Speaking of GPU upgrades, here's another one uh, by Torin. They've got a 4070 Ti Super. Is it even worth getting a new card this generation or should they wait for the RTX 6000 series? Now listen, the 4070 Ti Super is a phenomenal GPU still. The 5070 Ti is not that much faster than it. It's basically just under 4080 super levels of performance out there and it's not that big a jump. Really for you, in order to get any sizable jump, you've really gotta go up to, I'd say almost, forget the 5080, you'd really have to go to the 5090. And the 5090s, by the way, if you want a 5090, you really should have bought one two months ago because they are going up in price at this point. They spiked up in price when they first launched, they were crazy. Then they came back down in price. Then we saw them liquidate some of the models that did not seem to be selling. They dropped them down to 1999. They sold them out and they have never come back in stock. And uh, mostly it was the non overclock model and the more basic models. I guess if you're spending two to three to $4,000 on a GPU, you don't want to settle for the basic non overclock model. You want the ones with the bells and whistles because those are the models that are selling. And I told you at the time, I thought the true MSRP of the 5090 was closer to 23 to 2400 dollars and that's the price that they basically settled at after bouncing way down liquidating the models that weren't selling they bounced back up to ones that are selling but they're all at 2400 dollars right now so you'd have to spend 2400 dollars to get any kind of real upgrade that would be worth it to me for a 4070 ti super otherwise just hang on to it i'd wait for rtx 6000 and the next generation of Radeon GPUs. All right, Cole Mestovich, what do I personally do to reduce static electricity? Uh, almost nothing. <laughs> I remember back in the day wearing static wristbands. To yeah, we did this. To reduce a uh, chance of frying any components. Is the hardware these days better at resisting static? Now, no. We just worry about it less. Uh, most people build it without anything on. So stack electricity was probably massively overblown in terms of the ability to damage an actual component. I'm not saying it's never happened. Of course it's happened. It's just happened at a far lower frequency than we all used to freak out about. I would say if you're building a PC or you're handling PC components, let's handle some PC components right here. There's some obviously fine places to touch most of this. For instance, this back plate, this is just a big hunk of metal. It's actually not touching with the card. In fact, it would be nice if there were some thermal pads connecting it to the back for heat reasons. All that being said, this is not a really high heat GPU, probably doesn't need it. But for instance, if I had a motherboard or a CPU, I like don't rub your hands over the back of the CPU where the pads are. Just do common sense things. Don't wear socks on carpet. We have carpet in this room for sound deadening reasons, right? Because it's a recording studio. So I just never wear socks on this. Uh, I either wear my actual shoes or most of the time I just wear bare feet, basically. That's all you really need to do. Don't, don't take and uh, rub your cat all over the PC parts like this. You know, that will probably also not be good for it. But that being said, these things have turned out in the long run to be far more resilient than I think we used to freak out about. So I wouldn't really do anything special. All right, Mormon dude wants to know, do I feel like the next generation of consoles is gonna cause a surge in how graphically demanding games are? Do I think it'll finally make Nvidia and AMD relent and give more VRAM at lower GPU levels? I think the thing that's gonna make AMD and Nvidia relent, by the way, for GPUs that are in the two to $300 category is the availability of the three gigabyte GDDR7 modules because AMD most likely is gonna go GDDR7 next generation because it'll hopefully be a little bit better priced despite the crazy AI, you know, data centers literally gobbling up every memory chip on the planet right now, massively increasing the prices of RAM and SSDs. But I digress, but I think that NVIDIA and AMD are gonna to go to the three gigabyte modules as kind of the baseline. So we'll have 12 gig GPUs rather than eight gig GPUs. So you're only gonna get four more gigs of VRAM, but it should be enough at 1440p now. But what about when those consoles launch? Because if you look back, yeah, the PS5 drove games to become more graphically demanding and have more VRAM usage because the consoles had 12 to 13 and a half gigabytes of unified system memory that they could use for the GPU. And that did cause 
game developers to use a lot more VRAM in some of these games. And we started seeing that eight gigabyte GPUs just weren't really keeping up. The 3070 that you bought for, you know, if you were lucky, you bought it for MSRP around $600, probably you pay more like a thousand dollars during the shortage that thing is now kind of the, in the dustbin because it's only an eight gig gpu i'm sorry 3070 owners just the reality out there so when the next generation of consoles comes out i do expect they're going to have more unified system memory now it took a couple years after the consoles came out in 2020 for that to happen because game developers first of all the consoles have to get bought then the game developers have to come out and actually take advantage of that hardware and they develop the game for it so that's all going to take a little while to kind of happen, I wouldn't expect that to more like, when do these GPUs really start running out of VRAM? Like 2022, so about two years later. So we look ahead to like 2029, 2030, that's when I think we'll see those impacts. So probably fingers crossed, not a little while, but I do expect both AMD and Nvidia to offer more VRAM on their GPUs next generation, and in fact, starting next year with these super series, we're going to see the three gigabyte modules. Krisher wants to know, why do you still recommend ASRock motherboards for X3D CPU builds? Not necessarily, not for 9,000, but let's talk about that in a second. Shouldn't you wait until the problems have been resolved? I actually think that is the wise course of action. If you watched any of our content earlier in the year, I get, I get that you might come away with the impression that we're recommending Ryzen 9000 series CPUs or 9800X3D in particular, with ASRock motherboards, and we're actually not. What happened at the beginning of the year is we released all of our content. ASRock had a lot of really good looking B850 motherboards at great prices with really good features, and they were really pushing the envelope on a lot of other motherboard makers out there, which we think is phenomenal. And the VRMs were solid. They were bringing like better audio. They were bringing a lot more connectivity than other folks were. Why wouldn't you recommend those motherboards? Unfortunately, then later in the year, we got, you know, the ASRock X3D CPU issue really came to light. And it was like, is it fixed? Is it not fixed? Oh, we fixed it. Okay, great. They fixed it. Oh, except it still seems to be happening. Oh, there's a new BIOS. And it's like the saga. And then the other question, anytime this stuff happens, and the same thing happened with Intel at first, was how prevalent is this issue actually? Like, it's not 100% CPUs. It's a very small amount. That being said, it's an unacceptably high amount of CPUs that are failing, but it's even hard to replicate because if you look at Gamers Nexus recently tried to replicate the, the issue as well, it's just very, very tough. They took a motherboard, an ASRock motherboard that already killed an X3D CPU. They couldn't replicate the problem. So it is really, really tough to kind of pin down what's going on. So what I did, I went to ASRock before we did our fall update for our Ryzen motherboard guide, which by the way, I would love to do only do once a year, but I felt like we had to do mostly because there's a lot of new motherboards, but also the ASRock issue was out there. And we had pinned a comment on the other one saying, hey, we don't recommend ASRock motherboards for 9,000 series X3D CPUs. We went to ASRock and said, hey, is this thing fixed? I want a yes or no answer. And they said, yes, with BIOS 3.40. Now, that's only worth what you think ASRock's words is worth. And that's how we presented to the audience was like, this is what ASRock says. Here's my opinion is that if you feel uncomfortable, which you probably should feel uncomfortable if you're doing it Ryzen 9800X3 on ASRock motherboard, buy a motherboard from somebody else. That being said, I certainly recommend ASRock motherboards, especially the bu more budget focused motherboards for like the 9600X, the 9700X, 7600X builds. I don't recommend them for like 9000 series X3D CPUs. 7800X3D actually had the slowest failure rate of all the CPUs as they collected them in the ASRock Reddit forum out there, which was crazy. So I'd feel very comfortable with the 7800X3D. And then certainly if you're doing a budget build with like a Ryzen 7000 series CPU, and by the time that you're ready to upgrade a couple of years, they're likely going to have this sorted out anyway. But I would not put a 9800X3D, 9950X3D, 9900X3D on ASRock motherboard now, at least until you feel like they're fixed. If you got value out of this video, please give it a like. It really does make a difference to the channel. And subscribe for more cool PC content. Like, did you check out the best GPU to buy for early Black Friday sales? Check it out right here. Early Black Friday, October sales, and what kind of builds can you do right now with amazing CPU and GPU deals? Check out our October builds. We start at every price point from $800 all the way up to $2,000. Check them out and we'll catch you on the next one.